And this summer what I did, I did a project which tested the anti PCNA antibody optimization for histology and immunohistochemistry, immunohistochemistry procedures. So today I'm going to give you a little bit of background on the immune system, antibodies, and um, then I'm going to talk about the objective of my project, what the protein PCNA is, the methods I used, my results, and then my summary and conclusion. So the immune system is a constellation of responses to attack the outside body, and it's made up of, of a network of cells, tissues, organs that work together to protect the body, and um, some of the organs include the thymus, bone marrow, spleen, and lymph nodes. An antigen is any substance that can cause your body to have an immune response, and an antibody is something that's produced by B cells in the blood, and it marks um, specific antigens so that T cells in your blood can destroy them. So antibodies, they're produced by B cells in response to infections, and they identify or neutralize foreign objects. And they're also referred to as immunoglobins, immuno for immune, globin meaning protein. And an antibody is composed of two heavy chains, which are these long ones. And then, and that's why they're known as IgH chains, or immunoglobin heavy. And then these two light chains over here, and they're called immunoglobin light chains, or IgL chains. And an antigen, whenever it's in the body and it binds to an antibody, the antibody has a specific structure that's only specific to the particular antigen that it's trying to bind to. And when um, an antigen and an antibody bind, they bind at epitopes. So that's where they find right there. So there's different kinds of antibodies, and I worked with a monoclonal antibody, and it's produced by injecting an antigen into a mouse, and then letting it have a natural immune response, and then you isolate those B cells, which are forming the antibodies. Then you take a human tumor cell, and then you fuse it with the uh, antibody-forming cells, and you create these hybridomas, and then those Hybridomas are screened for the production of a desired antibody, so whichever antibody they're looking that refers back to the antigen, whichever um, cells are producing that, they um, pick those and then they clone them, and then they take the antibodies, and then they allow them to expand and produce so that you get a set of monoclonal antibodies. So histology and immunohistochemistry. Histology is a study of microscopic anatomy of cells and tissues of plants and animals. And immunohistochemistry allows you to see the tissue, the antigen distribution in tissues by applying specific antibodies to tissue surfaces. So these are some of the procedures of histology and immunohistochemistry. First, there's dissection, usually of a rat. That's what we use in our lab. Then we use fixation, which is a chemical that preserves the structure of the tissue. And it just creates a web-like structure on top of the tissue to preserve the molecular structure. Then we embed the tissue, usually in a wax-like structure called paraffin. And it allows it to have a solid um, uh, texture, which allows the tissue to be cut into very thin slices. So then we can mount it on tissue slides. And then we use antigen retrieval. I use the microwave to expose my antigens that might have been masked by the fixation that we use to um, preserve the structure. And then we stain to test for different antigens. So all the way from dissection, fixation, embedding, mount, uh, sectioning, mounting, those are all part of histology. And immunohistochemistry is the actual exposing of the antigens and then testing for them. So staining, how staining works is first we have a tissue with a predicted antigen on it, then we um, put a primary antibody solution on the tissue and it's supposed to bind to the antigen. Then we allow a secondary antibody to bind to the primary antibody. Then we um, add an enzyme. I use force radish peroxidase. And then you add a substrate. I use DAB and hydrogen peroxide and that reaction allows color to be seen, which is brown. And then after we stain for the antigen, we do a counter staining, which involves uh, hematoxylin, and it stains the nuclei of the cells blue. So it provides a background color, an indicator to determine the spec 
specificity of the staining. So the DAV staining that like I talked about in the previous slide, this is actually the staining for the antigen. Then you see these blue, that's all the nuclei. So if you have um, a blue circle with brown around it, then you know that the staining is in the cytoplasm. And then if you have um, the uh, brown replacing the blue, then you know that staining was in the nuclei. So the objective of my project was to optimize the conditions for an anti-PCNA antibody using histology and immunohistochemistry procedures. So anti-PCNA is, anti is an antibody for the protein PCNA, which stands for proliferating cell nuclear antigen. And it's one of the central molecules responsible for the decisions of death in the cell. And if PCNA doesn't work, or it's not present, or it's present in low quantities, apoptosis, or which is programmed cell death, can occur. That's a picture of the molecule of PCNA. So what I did, I, used, I had to test anti-PCNA antibody, and it's a monoclonal antibody from mouse, and it binds to the PCNA found in proliferating cell nuclei. And I had to use a negative control to be able to compare the results of the anti-PCNA. So I used a purified mouse IgG, and that's just basically a serum like blood from a mouse. And if it works properly, then no staining should be observed in the, in the negative control. So I tested three different conditions. The first condition I tested was to compare the different tissues, the different species, to see how the antibody works in different tissues. So in the procedure of histology and immunohistochemistry, I, I tested mouse tissue and human tissue, and then I fixed it in paraformaldehyde, which is one of the standard ones our lab uses, and then I embedded, section, mounted, and then the antigen retrieval I used was citric buffer, which has a pH of six. The paraformaldehyde, citric buffer, they are standard in our lab, so I tested, I used different uh, tissues to test those. So the results I got, so this is the negative control. So you can see that all this brown, that's all residue. The actual um, blue, that, those are the nuclei. So the, after counter staining, you can see that there's nuclei that are still blue, so no actual staining, which is the brown, got into the nuclei. So this, was, this tested negative, which is what we wanted. And same thing with the mouse tissue, that you can see all the nuclei are blue, a little bit of brown, which is background staining so that it just got caught in between the tissue. So all this brown, so it's good, so we know that they were tested negative because you can see the nuclei and there's no brown staining in the nuclei. So this is my results with the anti-PCNA antibody. You see that there's a lot of background staining, but after I counter stained, you can see that none of the staining was in the nuclei, so it is the same as the negative control. But in this tissue, you can see that there's a lot of brown staining in the nuclei on the edges, so this means that it did work in the mouse tissue. So we can conclude that anti-PCNA only works in mouse tissue. So then after I found that out, I had to test different fixatives. So I took a mouse tissue again, and I tested paraformaldehyde, which is one of our standard lab uses, and then Pax gene, which is another fixative, and then I kept the same antigen retrieval. So my results for that, this is a negative control. This is a, a blood vessel, but you can see that there, there's a lot of background staining, but there's still blue nuclei over here, so there's no, so it was negative. So this is the path maltide results. Since this is a liver, an adult mice, a liver doesn't really proliferate as much, so if we see one or two stained nuclei, then you can consider it a positive result. And the same thing happened with the Pax gene fixative. You could see a couple of stained nuclei, so you can conclude it to be positive. So anti-PCNA worked well with both fixatives, so we didn't see any difference. So my last condition, I had to compare different retrieval methods. And since um, anti-PCNA only worked in mouse tissue, and it didn't have a difference with PFA or paraformaldehyde and Pax gene, I kept our standard lab fixative, and I tested pH 6 and pH 9 antigen retrieval methods. And the results, this is our negative control. And then this is pH 6, so you can see that it actually did stain, so it was positive in the pH 6. And same thing with the pH 9, they look very similar, so you can see that there is staining. 
So we can conclude that antithesis may work well with both retrieval conditions. So basically this is a summary. So we took antithesis DNA, we tested it in mouse tissue and human tissue, but it didn't work in human tissue. So then within the mouse tissue, we tested two different fixatives, but they had similar results. And then, so we kept our standard um, fixative when I tested the different retrievals, and then I used um, citric buffer and the pH9 TRIS EDTA, and they both had similar results as well. So we can conclude that PCNA antibody works specifically in mouse tissue, regardless of fixation or retrieval methods. So these are my references. And I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Katya Manova, um, Alex, Molecular Cytology Core Facility, Mestre, Ning, Afsar, Volodia, and Madeline, and Memorial Sloan Kettering Center, Dr. Sat, Harlem Children's Society, Staten Island Tech, and thank you for listening.